we are with Anne-Marie Grandmeyer, a professor in fashion and textile sciences at the University of Freiburg and coordinator of Fashion Dying. Welcome, Anne-Marie, and thank you for joining us. Thank you as well for inviting me. So I would like to start a little bit um, with an introduction to Fashion Dying, the project you coordinate and the mission it has. Yeah, actually, we are four partner universities two coming from Germany, one from Bulgaria and one from Romania. And um, well, we all have a different perspective on fashion and textiles and also sustainability. Um, we as the University of Education in Freiburg, we are responsible for education. And then we are partners of Reutling University. Um, they are, or they have a faculty of textile and design, but we work together with people who are mostly in retail fashion. And then we have the University of Yash, and they are more the ones who are into textile technology. And we have the fashion designers in Bulgaria at Trakia University. So these are our four different perspectives on the same topic, fashion diet. <laughs> And you're developing um, a, a program to educate, which the ones that will be the future leaders of an industry. Uh, why, why do you think it, it needs to start from education, that change towards sustainability? Yes, I think we are the initiators of this project as we have the education's perspective on it. And I think that the fashion industry has already moved forward, but um, there is a certain lack of interest in education. And I think that we cannot move on without educating people. Educating people means educating the educators. That's what we address in our project. These are the lecturers at universities, but also their students, also their PhD candidates. And I also think that it's important to educate teachers and students at school. So that's something which this project has in mind, that we try to have a broader target group, not only universities, but coming from universities, also getting our materials into schools. And well, you mentioned that lack of interest, but which are the key barriers faced by uh, educators, by academics that are trying to introduce sustainability into the curriculum? Yeah, this I think is something new. Um, as we come with education for sustainability as a guiding principle. So this is the main goal behind it, that we say, well, we do not have any chance to implement a new curriculum at other universities because everybody has got his or her own interests in that. But um, instead of saying, well, we need extra modules for educational development, we say, well, let's integrate it from the very beginning as you take ESD, Education for Sustainability or Sustainable Development, as a guiding principle. You shall do this, you shall integrate it, implement it together with design education, economic education, and so on. And how, so we've seen like in industry many like practices that are aimed at greenwashing. And how can be this um, sustainability principle be introduced into the curriculum in an authentic manner so that it doesn't look like it's just an opportunity or a marketing effort to introduce something into the curriculum? Yeah, I think we have to develop uh, this kind of decision making. Um, as we have students, lecturers who are both, they are on the one hand professionals in a certain way on a certain stage, and on the other hand, they are consumers that can make their own decisions. And of course, uh, we have to build up a critical mindset. That's what we try, for example, with our student teachers who want to become multipliers in a certain way. 
And what they need is a certain knowledge about quality dimensions concerning fashion and tackle styles. And of course, we know we cannot say, well, you have to do this. We cannot act morally in that way. This is the decision you have to make because you have to act in a sustainable manner. What we can say is, well, we give you the mindset that you can make up your own decisions and that you can see the different dimensions, but also the impact of your decisions. Well, yeah, well, that's, that I, I, I truly believe that education should be like that, encouraging just a mindset or and the decision making. And this, there's some sort of gap because well, sustainability is being introduced more and more in the universities. In the UK, we have um, strong um, influence of PRIME, which is Principles for Responsible Management Education, that is gaining relevance in, in the educational system. But still, there's, there's some part of the industry, like the majority of the industry, is still reluctant to, to shift to more sustainable practices. If we think of fast fashion, the business model, it's, it's, it's broken, it doesn't work. So how can these new, newly educated and future leaders in education and industry um, bridge that gap between what is happening in industry and what we're this change we're trying to achieve? Well, this is actually a very difficult question. <laughs> As you can see, we haven't found a solution yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we can, what can we do? What can we initiate? I think this is the question we have to ask ourselves. And we see on the one hand, the regulations, we see how governments can act. We have, for example, newly the, the Fashion Act New York. We have um, Recycling Management Act in Germany. So the direction, I think, is clear. The direction is circular economy, yeah? Um, and we should not forget about this enormous consumption which comes along with fast fashion and circular economy is not the only solution this, of this because um, as long as we really produce too much, we have an overproduction if we have a circular economy, yes or no. But what I see is that we have... Um, top-down processes that come with the law yeah and we have bottom-up processes that we have a certain change of mindset in our consumers with our consumers and um, firstly I see here the young generation because they are much more aware concerning to studies uh, when it comes to sustainable decisions when it comes to the impact of an industry towards um, the environment. Of course, and I, I don't want to uh, forget about this, we have a so-called um, intention behavior gap, or we also call it attitude behavior gap. And so um, this is something we have to work on. We have to work on with education in order to build up knowledges, but also to build up a certain empathy because both works together when it comes to decision-making at the point of sale. So you see, I do not have the solution yet. Nobody has it. <laughs> no. but, uh, we see that we are in a certain process. And when the consumers are interested in a more sustainable industry, then also the industry has to change. And they see this young generation as the new consumers, but also maybe as their new professionals. So they have to gain their interest. Yeah? And yeah. throughout the pandemic, we could really see that the more sustainable companies were the more successful ones. Yeah? For this reason, I really think there is a chance when we all work together on this. And I think we do not have any alternative to this. I, I like to to go back to what you mentioned, the role of um, policy making in in changing those practices from the top. And do you think it is it takes too long to pass a, a bill or to regulate this industry whose impact is ridiculous every day? Do you think it's taking too long to regulate? 
Of course, it takes too long. And for this reason, I think these consumer initiatives, the initiatives coming from sustainable agency, coming from NGOs are very important because these are the bottom up processes and the policy is interested in this. They see, well, okay, the consumers changed, people changes their mindsets. So we also have to do something. We might have to be a little bit quicker than we already are. And so, um, also, I see the companies um, when it is obvious for us that there is greenwashing, then this uh, could damage their images. And this is something very dangerous. And they know about it because they might lose their clients to other companies. And in fashion diet, you don't have any university involved in that part of the regulation, but you have the different stages, you have design, you have the part of textiles. How it's like, how does the future of fashion diet look like? So right now you're focused on the education part. We are focusing on the educational part uh, by creating modules for um, education and uh, the interest in it is that we say, well, we have an open access uh, database, which is called Global Campus. Um, the, it's uh, an integration of more than 90 universities, but each university who is interested can do this, can join it. And there we develop open educational resources. So um, people can go um, to these different modules and they can decide what they're interested in. For example, they take something on methods, uh, design thinking and sustainability, or they might choose a course on um, pattern making and sustainability. And then they take the material and they sort out what they need. So the idea behind it is to make the access as easy as possible and um, then offer the opportunity to adapt what we have developed to the own courses, to make it quick. This was our idea, to make it quick and easy. And is it like, are you planning on taking that step further, maybe like increasing the collaboration of universities or are you trying to remain the group as you are and keep developing content? Okay, I mean, each project ends after a certain time. And there's always the question of sustainability. What are you going to do afterwards? Um, and of course, uh, all the contents will be accessible in and will stay in local campus. But uh, we also have a certain database as one of our intellectual outputs um, that is developed mainly at um, Reutling University, where they also have an education center, center for education and further education. And there we want to integrate our module and then develop it, yeah, so that it remains on a current status. This is always the difficulty about materials. So, and I really hope that we will get further projects to continue these ideas of a sustainability because this cannot stop at the moment. This is for sure. And <laughs> that's something that um, I find it really hard because you see these amazing projects coming up. And as you said before, these initiatives that come from, from the bottom to the top um, gain more and more relevance when addressing this chain. And what do you think? So in the UK, we have many small initiatives that are uh, working with communities, like teaching about garment and care at home, how to wash your garments, yes. and then how to care for them or how to mend. Do you think these initiatives have an important impact in, in achieving a more sustainable consumption? Yes, I think they are very important because for me, they really be belong to these bottom-up processes. Um, they show that uh, consumers have changed. I mean, I can remember this when I go back to my grandmother and she was the one who sew her clothes at home and uh, did the things we now want to reactivate yeah, with the help of organizations. 
Um, we call it informal education and formal education. Uh, uh, if you want to differentiate between NGOs, sustainability agencies, and what they bring up is kind of ideas and what we do at school. And so what I think is very, very important is that we combine our activities, that we don't close up at the university. We don't do this in teacher education because we have to be open to schools. And um, we also have these other activities that are outside. If we, are, for example, go for an interview with an expert of a secondhand uh, uh, shop or things like that, um, then this is informal education, what is happening, because we gain the ideas of others. We, and this is important for us and for the whole sustainable development, that we open to each other, that we work together, and that we bring together our activities, because we can learn from each other. Yeah, that's, I think that the ultimate... Uh principle or the strength that moves all these projects it's collaboration and that's what really called my attention about fashion diet that you have four universities with different disciplines collaborating um it's just like i found it very interesting and how like that can address like the well-needed change we need in in an industry like fast fashion well, like fashion sorry um, so just my last question, do you, do you like as fashion diet, do you also collaborate with maybe local governments? You're funded by European Union. Yes. But to an extent, do you collaborate outside the university with other institutions to promote those materials to get like to schools maybe or other educational institutions? Yes. Um, well, we have all together these three outputs. The first one is the ESD module uh, with the main target group of lecturers, but also PhD candidates and, and students, of course. And then the, we have the database, um, and uh, which has a certain open access for others. And the third one is um, teaching and learning material for schools. Um, but we have also already integrated different stakeholders that do not only come from uh, universities, but also from, from companies. So uh, while we develop our modules and also our um, teaching and learning material, we have so-called learning, teaching, training activities. And they are three days long. And uh, for these events, we invite stakeholders. So we invite our lecturers from different universities and they are now organized as virtual events. So during the last LTT, uh, which uh, took place in um, Iași in Romania, we had more than 70 participants. And they came from different universities, but also from companies. They were educators in companies. Um, and like this, we really tried to open, you know, also to the industry. And we saw that there was really great industry, uh, great interest also from industry partners um, in Romania, but also in other countries. And uh, we also integrated a textile research institute and so on and so on. So keep it open, I say, and interact with different partners. That's important because otherwise, we mainly have a certain perspective and we go on with, but uh, we see that, well, trying to get into a sustainable direction means to interact and to see the interdisciplinary facets of these processes and bring together the people. Well, thank you so much, and marie uh, it's been great hearing about Fashion Diet, the project. It's it's just amazing. I think it's really what we need. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Hope like many more projects come up like this. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. And so, well, I really hope uh, for you and your colleagues, so whenever you have the opportunity to join our project, um, just do it, just go for it. 